So in this section, we want to discuss what happens when you already have substituents on your aromatic ring and then you do electrophilic aromatic substitution. First of all, we want to think of the substituents as doing one of two things. It can either add electron density to our ring or it can remove electron density from our ring. So we'll find that they'll either increase or decrease the electron density. And we'll find that it does this in two different ways. But uh, um, if it adds electron density, we will find that it will make the benzene ring more electron rich. By the way, that means the reaction will go faster than benzene. If it removes electron density from the ring, we'll find it will make the benzene ring um, less electron rich, which that'll slow down the reaction. So we'll talk about that. We call this one activating and this one deactivating, but we'll talk about that here in just a few minutes. Now, another interesting thing that can happen is that there are three different possible locations where you can do substitution on a mono substituted benzene ring. Uh, you can have it in the ortho, the meta, or the para positions. And we're going to talk about which ones are favored for different substituents and why they are favored. So there are two different electron donating and withdrawing effects. One is called the inductive effect and the, the other one is called a resonance effect. The inductive effect is determined based on differences in electronegativity. So if you have an electronegative atom like nitrogen or oxygen or halogen, those are going to be electron withdrawing inductively. So here's an example. Uh, this carbon nitrogen bond is a little bit polar. Through that sigma bond, uh, uh, we would withdraw electrons from this carbon. And so this would be a, uh, um, an inductive electron withdrawing group. By comparison, uh, if we look at this methyl group, um, there is a, there's a couple of different ways you can think about this, but um, it turns out that sp3 hybridized carbons are a little less electronegative than sp2 hybridized carbons. So sp3 tends to donate electron density to the sp2. We saw that with carbocations. We see that with, uh, we see that with uh, uh, the substitution patterns on uh, on alkenes, uh, remember Saitsev's rule, all right? And, uh, and so we will find that uh, we can donate electron density. So alkyl groups are electron donating groups. So any atoms that are more electronegative than carbon tend to pull electron density away inductively. All right, notice that I said inductively. Uh, uh, when it comes to resonance, we get a whole different thing going on. And the alkyl groups tend to donate electron density. So those are our, our big effects there. We also have um, electron donating resonance effects and electron withdrawing resonance effects. We're going to start with the electron donating effects. So we can get uh, with the with the donating effects, we have lone pairs of electrons. With the withdrawing effects, we have pi bonds. We're going to start with the lone pairs. So we'll get resonance donating when there is a lone pair electrons on the atom that is directly adjacent to the benzene ring. In this case, we have aniline. Aniline, uh, we would normally think of this bond as being polar and electron withdrawing. However, because of that lone pair of electrons, it is resonance donating. And we will find that it increases the electron density on this ring. All right. If we draw the additional resonance structures for aniline, we'll find there's one that has a negative charge on carbon 2, carbon 4, carbon 6, and then we have the other resonance structure of aniline uh, where we've just rotated the double bonds around. We're going to find this happens quite a bit with oxygen, nitrogen, and even halogens. They are uh, resonance donating and that will affect the reactivity of this ring. We also have electron withdrawing resonance effects. This is where instead of having a lone pair electrons that is adjacent, we have a pi bond that is adjacent. 
that pi bond causes there to be a partial positive charge on the atom that is directly adjacent to the ring and uh, and in some of the resonance structures you'll see as it's a full positive charge and that causes a net electron withdrawing effect we'll see this in atoms where we have the, the aerial group so our aromatic ring attached to some atom attached to some other atom where Z is more electronegative than Y and there's a double bond there typically this other atom is oxygen all right and uh, it can be other things but typically it's oxygen and typically Y is carbon but it, it can be nitrogen like in the case of a nitro group um, the Z can actually be nitrogen in the case of like a nitrile group or an imine group but there's lots of possibilities there so uh, in this case here we have benzaldehyde there are seven total resonance structures that we can draw so six additional ones or seven total notice that this one and this one put a positive charge on the carbon that is adjacent to the ring and that that turns out to be an important resonance structures when describing how these things affect reactivity all right so uh, when we combine the inductive and resonance effects we can get we can get the total effect before we do that uh, I, I skipped number 15 so we should go on to number 15 and do that real quick All right, so we want to draw all of the resonance structures for these. So this one has a lone pair of electrons that's ad directly adjacent to the ring. And so that one is going to donate electron density. All right, it will donate electron density uh, to our ring. So this one is going to be what we refer to as an electron donating group because it'll donate electron density. So let's take that and we're going to push that pair of electrons here. Now when we do that, that would give us five bonds going to this carbon. So we're going to take this pair of electrons and kick it out to that carbon. All right, so, so we have a positive charge on that oxygen and a negative charge here on that carbon. We can draw an additional resonance structure. So we'll take this pair of electrons, make it into a pi bond, and this pair of electrons to become a lone pair on carbon 4. All right, so we'll have another resonance structure. Take this one and then put the lone pair on that particular atom. All right, there's one more additional resonance structure that apparently I did not leave enough room for. So I'm going to just kind of squeeze it in here. But we're going to reform, uh, or we're going to reform our aromatic ring. So we'll take this and kick it in there to that, uh, to make that bond. And then we'll kick this one back out to the oxygen. I'm just going to draw it right here. All right, so those are five total resonance structures, four additional resonance structures um, that we have. 
This one has even more resonant structures. Uh, again, I probably don't have enough room. I need to draw it smaller. So, Our first resonant structure is the resonant structure we can draw with any carbonyl where we take the, uh, the pi bond and kick it out to the oxygen and create a positive charge on that carbon. negative charge there and a positive charge there this is going to be just like the one we saw on the on the slide a few minutes ago all right now uh, we will do the next resonant structure where we're going to pull one of these pairs of electrons in and make a pi bond here and that will put a positive charge on this carbon So next, uh, um, we're going to move that positive charge around the ring. So we will move this pair of electrons to there. Negative charge there. And we've got a positive charge there. We're going to do the other one. I'll put the positive charge here. All right. Uh, now we're going to take this pair of elect that 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 pi bond and we'll bring it over here. And I'll just draw it here. So positive charge on that carbon, negative charge on the oxygen. And then one final structure, we're going to take uh, one of the pairs of electrons. I didn't really leave enough room there. I apologize. Let's see if I can squeeze it in. We're going to take one of those pairs of electrons that's on the oxygen, and we're going to squeeze it in. and we'll get acetophenone. And you'll notice this is just the resonant structure of this. So seven total resonant structures, and, uh, and that gives us those particular resonant structures. So this one, because we create positive charges here, this one is an electron withdrawing group. All right. So electron with donating because we put negative charges on the ring and here electron withdrawing because we put positive charges. Okay, so. So now we want to combine the inductive and resonance effects and see what that does to electrophilic aromatic substitution. So if we want to determine if the benzene ring is more or less electron rich, we need to consider both effects, both the inductive and resonance effects. And we're going to find sometimes the inductive effects will have a bigger effect and sometimes the resonance effects will, will have the bigger effect. And we, the, the best way to do this is to memorize which ones have which effects. It's pretty easy to memorize though. So we'll find that alkyl groups donate electron density by an inductive effect, but they don't have any resonance effects because they don't have pi bonds. And since they don't have resonance effects, they only have the inductive, so they're strictly electron donating. So any alkyl substituent just by itself is going to be a uh, electron donating group more electron rich than benzene by itself. 
when we consider both the resonance and, and inductive effects together for other things. So alkyl groups, as we just mentioned, are electron donating inductive only. When we have a lone pair of electrons, usually that lone pair of electrons is on either nitrogen, oxygen, or nitrogen or oxygen. And so we'll find that these are inductive withdrawing, but they're resonance donating. We'll find that the resonance donating out, uh, um, it outweighs the, uh, the inductive effect caused by the electronegativity of these atoms. And as a consequence, um, it makes these more electron rich. So things with a lone pair and a nitrogen or oxygen tend to be more electron rich. The opposite happens with halogens like chlorine. If you have a halogen here, it is inductively electron withdrawing and resonance donating. Uh, so you can donate electron pairs in there, but we have a strong electron withdrawing effect that is inductive. And in that case, the inductive effect is going to make this benzene ring less electron rich. The resonance effect will have an effect, and we'll talk about that here in a bit, but the electron withdrawing will uh, decrease the electron density in the ring. And then there are the cases where we have substituents that have either a partial positive charge on this atom or a full positive charge. The greater that positive charge is, the more electron withdrawing these are. And so we're going to rank those here in just a few minutes. So let's look at an electron density map. Here's benzene, and so this is sort of our baseline of what is the electron density uh, on the benzene ring. And you'll see it's got some electron density there because of the pi electrons. Uh, when we put aniline on here, aniline has, uh, an, it's the NH2 group, it has a lone pair of electrons. That lone pair of electrons is resonance donating, and you'll see it adds significantly to the electron density in the ring. So you'll have more of that negative charge there. Conversely, if we have benzaldehyde, we, uh, uh, we looked at benzaldehyde a, a couple of pages ago. Uh, um, or if you go back and look, if you go back and look at this, this one is acetophenone, which is uh, a very similar compound. Because it has, I'm going to go back to this picture, because it has this part, this positive charge that's uh, uh, caused by the uh, resonance structure. There's a partial positive charge on that carbon. Because of that, we can withdraw electron density and we can shift a negative charge out to the oxygen and put some partial positive charge on the atoms in the benzene ring. As a consequence, we're going to find that this benzene ring is less electron rich. The reason we care about this is the more electron rich an, uh, a benzene ring is, the more reactive it is to electrophilic aromatic substitution. The less electron rich it is, the less reactive it is to electrophilic aromatic substitution. So now we're ready to talk about the uh, electrophilic aromatic substitution on substituted benzene rings where they already have one substituent. And a little later, we're gonna look and see what happens when we have more than one substituent. So cool stuff happens there. So with electrophilic aromatic substitution, uh, um, when we have the reaction, uh, it, the reactivity is going to be determined by the electron density in the ring. And so we'll find that the more electron density there is in the ring, the faster the reaction will go. All right, and the less electron density there is, the slower the reaction will go. But then there is another aspect to the electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction that we need to take into consideration. And that is, so not just the rate of the reaction, but the orientation. What is the regioselectivity when we do substitution. Does the new group go to an ortho, a meta, or a para substitute or location? And the answer is, it depends on what kind of group you have. Some groups tend to direct to ortho and para positions, while others tend to direct to the meta position. 
So we're going to look at what, uh, what substituents do what. We'll find that there's significant overlap between the reaction rate and the orientation, but there's also one counterexample. It's because of the halogens, and we'll talk about those here in just a moment. So let's look at ortho para directors. We're going to start with toluene. Toluene has an alkyl group on it. So it's got a, uh, a methyl on the benzene, so methyl benzene. Methyl is electron donating, so it increases the electron uh, increases the electron density in the ring, uh, and so it will make the reaction go faster. But in addition to that, we'll find that when we do the, so it activates it, so it makes it go faster. But in addition to that, when we look at the products, we get primarily ortho and para substitution. We get about 40% ortho, 60% para and hardly any of the meta substitution product. So because it's primarily ortho and para, we call this an ortho para director, OP director. So it's an ortho para director. We're going to find that all of our um, all of our electron donating groups are ortho para directors. We also have things that are meta directors. An example of this is nitrobenzene. If we attempt to do nitration on nitrobenzene, so we get dinitrobenzene, we're going to find that one, it's a very strongly electron withdrawing. If we look at, if we look at the uh, the structure of that nitro, which I'm going to draw that real quick. All right, so here is nitrobenzene, and you'll see that there's no way to get a neutral charge on this nitrogen uh, because, of, because of the octet rule. So we have a full formal positive one charge on that nitrogen. That means that there is a positive one charge right adjacent to the ring that's going to pull electron density away from that ring. Nitro is very strongly electron withdrawing. So I wanted to show you that. So that's what we mean when we say it deactivates it, it slows down the reaction. But in addition to that, you'll notice that uh, more than 90% of the product is the meta product. The ortho, just a little bit of the ortho position and, uh, and hardly any of the para position. So um, because the meta product is the primary primary product, we say that this is a meta director. All right. Well, we want to categorize all of the substituents. We don't want to just do methyl and nitro. We want to categorize all of the substituents. And fortunately, it's easy to categorize. So let's do that. We're going to start with things that are uh, that are activating. So uh, we're going to start with the activating groups, and all of these activating groups are ortho para directors. So, uh, so we're going to talk about what things are uh, um, activators versus deactivators. Activators add electron density, deactivators pull electron density away from the ring. Uh, activators make the reaction go faster, deactivators make the reaction go slower. Ortho para directors. Uh, versus meta directors, we're going to find that um, all of our activators are also ortho para directors. So anytime you have a substituent that's an activator, it's also an ortho para director. It's going to include all of the things that are resonance donating that have nitrogen or oxygen, including amino groups, regardless of whether they are primary, secondary, or tertiary amines. Uh, um, uh, phenol, so OH groups, alkoxy groups. Um, the This is one that has a carbonyl adjacent to it. That carbonyl removes some of the electron density from this, but it, it keeps, it, it, it's still uh, a resonance donating group, so uh, it, it's, it's definitely an activator. And then our alkyl group. This is our, this is our trend. These uh, uh, amines, tend to be the strongest activating groups. 
And then when we come down here, the alkyl group is an activating group, but not quite as strong as uh, some of these other groups. All right, our second category are things that are deactivators, so they're net electron withdrawing. However, they're resonance donating uh, because they have lone pairs of electrons, and therefore they are ortho para directors. We'll find this includes just the halogens. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine are all electron withdrawing, so they're deactivating. In other words, they slow the reaction down, but then they're also, uh, 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 but they're also ortho para directors because they are resonance donating. And we'll look at how that works a little bit later. Finally, we've got meta directors. Meta directors are strong deactivating groups, so they all deactivate, uh, um, and we will find that they are all, uh, um, like I said, these are all meta directors. These are going to include things that, like here, this is a carbonyl, so this would, if you had this on a benzene ring, it'd be benzaldehyde. If you have a ketone, that would be electron withdrawing, an ester, a carboxylic acid, nitrile, sulfonic acid. And then you get down here, these are very strongly electron withdrawing because they have a full positive charge on the atom directly adjacent to the benzene ring. So these are very electron withdrawing. And so they're very strongly deactivating. One common feature of all of these is that they either have a full positive charge, like the two down here at the bottom, or they have a partial positive charge caused by uh, resonance structures on the atom directly adjacent to the ring. All right, so we'll find that all of our ortho pair directors um, are either an alkyl group or things that have lone pairs of electrons. All of our metal, our meta directors are going to be things that have either a full or partial positive charge on the atom directly adjacent to the ring. So we want to look at number 16. So this one is pretty straightforward. We want to classify each one of these as being either electron donating or electron withdrawing. In this case, uh, um, this, it has a lone pair of electrons on there. So this, and it's oxygen, so this is going to be an electron donating group. The oxygen is inductive withdrawing, but the resonance donating caused by that lone pair makes this overall an electron donating group. So this is a good electron donating group. Iodine, this one's kind of interesting. So by the way, this one's also an ortho para director. All right, I'm gonna point that out even though that's not part of the question. This one is electron withdrawing because it is, it's a halide. So it's an electron withdrawing group, but because of the lone pairs, this is also an ortho para director. All right, and then this is an alkyl group. So it is an electron donating group. It's inductive donating. There's no resonance involved here. Electron donating. Uh, and this is also going to be an ortho para director. So all of these are ortho pair directors. This one is strongly electron donating. This one, uh, the middle one is a little bit electron withdrawing, and this one here is uh, a little bit electron donating. So why do some of these activate and others deactivate? What's going on here? Well, again, we're going to look at what happens with the energy diagram. We're going to analyze that energy diagram to help us understand. And, of course, the Hammond postulate is going to come into play. So, first of all, remember that the first step of this is a, um, the first step of this reaction is the formation of our uh, stabilized carbocation, which we call the arenium ion. It's a resonant stabilized. All right. It is the rate determining step because it has the large activation energy here. 
Okay. Um, and because it is an endothermic step, the transition state of this step is going to more closely resemble the product of the step, which happens to be the intermediate of the reaction. So Hammond postulate says that the transition state resembles the thing it's closer in energy to. Since it's closer in energy to this intermediate, it resembles that intermediate more. That means that anything that can help to stabilize that positive charge is going to speed up the rate of reaction. So the more stable our carbocation is, the lower in energy the transition state. So the lower this is, the lower that transition state energy is going to be. And that is what the Hammond postulate tells us. So things that can donate electron density and help to stabilize that positive charge are going to speed up the rate of the reaction because they're going to lower that activation energy. So let's compare a couple of different substituents. We have benzene here in the middle. Here there are no substituents to raise or lower that activation energy. And as a consequence, we'll find that it has some rate. We don't know what the rate is, but here is our activation energy uh, uh, of that. When we compare that to something that is an electron donating group, so some substituent that donates electron density to the ring, like an alkyl group or, uh, or a resonance donating group like methoxy or, or an, an amino group, we're going to find that that lowers the energy of this intermediate. When it lowers the energy of this intermediate, the Hammond postulate tells us that it's also going to lower the transition state, making this a faster reaction. So by stabilizing this, we stabilize the transition state, which lowers our activation energy and makes the reaction go faster. I'm going to say that again. By stabilizing the carbocation, we lower the energy of this, which, according to the Hammond postulate, lowers the energy of our transition state, which means we have a lower activation energy. If we have an electron withdrawing group, the exact opposite occurs. The, ele the electron withdrawing group destabilizes this carbocation, causes the, uh, uh, causes the uh, uh, energy of this to go up, which means that our transition state will be at a higher energy, which means that our activation energy will be larger. So it's all because of that energy diagram and our transition state. And, uh, and the Hammond postulate helps us to determine why it is that stabilizing this will stabilize our transition state. So now let's look at those orientation effects. There are two general types, ortho paradirectors and meta directors. Now we've mentioned this a little bit already, uh, but we want to get into what causes the ortho para and what causes the uh, meta directing. All right. So we're going to start with um, all of our ortho para directors are either alkyl groups or have a lone pair of electrons on the atom directly adjacent. So that includes, uh, so all our alkyl groups, that includes things like uh, uh, amino groups, hydroxy groups, alkoxy groups, and it also includes things like halogens. They're all ortho para directors. The meta directors all have either a partial positive charge or a full positive charge on the atom directly adjacent. So they either have a full positive charge or a partial positive charge on the atom directly adjacent. All right, so here is our procedure for determining whether we have something that is uh, ortho para or meta. So to evaluate the effect, we need to use this following procedure. Step one, draw all the resonance structures for uh, the carbocation formed from attack uh, of an electro uh, electrophile at the ortho, meta, and para positions for a substituted benzene. Evaluate the stability of the intermediate resonance structures. The electrophile attacks the positions that give the most stable carbocation. So this can be kind of uh, uh, this can be kind of a tedious process if you go through and draw 
all the resonance structures for, for ortho, para, ortho, meta, and para positions. But it is helpful to look at. All right, so here is an example. So here is an example where we have a methyl substituent. So we have an alkyl group. If we do ortho attack, so we attack at this particular position, that means our electrophile is going to be here. We'll create a positive charge at, uh, at this position here, here, and here. Because this one has a positive charge directly on the carbon where there is an alkyl, that particular Car that particular resonance structure is stabilized more than these other re resonance structures. And as a consequence, that's going to give us one of our preferred products, which is the ortho substitution pattern. If we do meta, well, meta, uh, we get uh, our positive charge at this location, this location, and this location. And you'll notice that none of those positive charges are directly adjacent to where our methyl is. And so these while there's nothing wrong with these structures, these are not stabilized by our substituent. So these are going to be slightly higher in energy for the, for the uh, intermediate and therefore also higher in energy for the transition state. And so you're less likely to form these. When we do para attack, we'll get uh, a positive charge adjacent here, here where that methyl is, and then here in this other position. And as a consequence, we will find uh, um, that we have a positive charge adjacent to the methyl that stabilizes the positive charge. So this is going to give us additional stability to our resonance structure. So it counts as a preferred product. So things that are uh, alkyl groups are going to do ortho para. So we know they're electron donating and they also are ortho para directors. Let's look at what happens when we have an amine group. Now, it'll be completely analogous if you use an OH or an alkoxy group, so I'm not going to do those, but uh, here we have an amine. Again, when we do ortho attack, uh, uh, when we do ortho attack, we get the positive charge here, there, and there. Because we have a positive charge directly adjacent to a lone pair of electrons, we can draw an additional resonance structure. That additional resonance structure does put the positive charge on nitrogen, but you'll notice that every, every atom in this resonance structure has a full octet, and that makes this unusually stable compared to the others. And as a consequence, that means that our average structure will be lower, which means that ortho is going to be one of our preferred substitution patterns. When we do meta, we get these resonance structures, but none of them have the positive charge adjacent to the lone pair of electrons, so we can't draw that additional extra stabilized resonance structure. So while it's possible to form some of this product, it's not very likely because it's going to be a higher energy pathway. When we have the para position, we get the same effect that we saw with ortho, where we have one of the resonance structures where we can kick out uh, the pair, or we can uh, kick in that pair of electrons to give everything a full octet. And so this is especially stabilized. And as a consequence, our hybrid structure is more stabilized. And, uh, and that means that that's going to be one of our preferred products. So when we use amino, we tend to have ortho para. So we say amine is an ortho para director. As I mentioned, if you have uh, if you have an oxygen with a lone pair, it'll do the same thing, and we'll also see the halogens because they have lone pairs. They can also do these same additional resonance structures. Now let's look at what happens when we have a nitro group. So here we've got the electrophile that comes in, um, and nitro is a meta director. It's a strongly electron withdrawing group. So uh, nitro is uh, uh, a meta director. Uh, here, when we put the electrophile on, we'll get positive charge here, there, and there. This is a particularly interesting structure because we put a, a full positive charge here and here adjacent to each other. And that means that that particular resonance structure is destabilized. 
because it's destabilized, this is going to be a less preferred product. We're going to get less of this ortho product. Now, as you saw a little earlier when we did nitration, we do get a little bit of it. So it's not impossible, but because this has a higher energy pathway, we're going to get less of it. For meta, we can avoid that by putting the positive charges around, but not directly adjacent to the nitro group. So we can avoid that destabilization and that will give us our preferred product. For a para, we get a similar effect that happens with the, met with the meta. Uh, we end up having positive charges directly adjacent to each other in this resonance structure. And as a consequence, we'll find that that is destabilized. All right, so it's not so much that this directs it to meta, it's that it directs it away from ortho and para. So we call it a meta director, but it pushes it away from the ortho and para positions. So this is a summary of all of our uh, uh, reactivity, so activating and deactivating, and of our directing effects. So all of these up here are activators. Uh, and the further up you go, the stronger they are as activators. And the more activating they are, uh, the more activating they are, uh, um, the faster the reaction will go. Um, these are weakly deactivating. So the halogens are weakly deactivating, uh, but they are still ortho pair directors because they are resonance donating. And so they have that lone pair of electrons. And then finally, these are the strong deactivators and they get stronger deactivating as we go down. And uh, all of our deactivators are meta directors. And as a reminder, all of our meta directors have a partial positive or full positive charge on the atom directly adjacent to the ring. So I want you to memorize this chart. If you're taking organic chemistry, you should memorize this chart. Uh, it's going to be very helpful that you are able to recall it quickly so that you don't have to go back and access uh, uh, um, a piece of paper or, or your long-term memory. You want to be able to do this fairly quickly where you can analyze right away and say, ah, that's electron donating. Ah, that's electron withdrawing. All right. So that is the summary. So let's look at 17 and 21. And after 17 and 21, I think we're going to, uh, yes, after 17 and 21, we're going to stop this video and we'll make a third video for the final part. All right, draw the products formed when each compound is treated with nitric and sulfuric acid. So nitric acid and sulfuric acid. So here we're doing nitration. And so really the things we need to determine is uh, one, state whether the reaction goes faster or slower. And we also need to determine where the substituent goes. So is this an ortho pair director or is it a meta director? Is it an activator or a deactivator? So at first you may want to refer back to that list that we were looking at a minute ago like this. But ultimately I want you to have it memorized where you know right away you say, ah, that's a deactivator. It's a strong deactivator. There's a partial positive charge there. That means it's also a meta director. So when we do the nitration, we're going to get uh, we're going to get the substituent in the meta position. So we will get NO2 in the meta position. All right, and then one uh, uh, one final thing about this, uh, one final thing about this is uh, we wanted to state whether it is faster or slower because this is a deactivator. It's going to be slower. All right, this one is also a deactivator. Activator. Sorry about the messiness there. So it's also going to be slower. All right. And that also means that we're going to get the meta product. So.
So we'll get that cyano group in the meta position. All right, here we have OH. OH has that lone pair of electrons uh, on the atom, uh, and so it's a strong resonance donating. So this is activating, and because it's activating, it should go faster. And that also means that we're going to get ortho and para. We'll draw the ortho, get a nitro there, and we will get the para. And I'll draw that one like that, usually because to indicate the nitrogen is the thing that is attached. All right, this one is one of the special ones. It's one of those ones that's in the middle. It is a deactivator. And so that means it goes slower, right? So it's electron withdrawing, it's deactivator, but it's not a meta director because it has the lone pair electrons on here. Because of those lone pair electrons, we're gonna get ortho para. So ortho, we get NO2 there. And para. Will be there. So it's slower because it's uh, electron withdrawing, but it's an ortho para director because of the resonance donating. So again, that one's one that's in the middle. Alkyl groups are activators, which means it'll be faster. And these are all relative to benzene, right? This one goes faster than benzene. That one goes slower than benzene. HNO3, H2SO4. Because it is an activator, automatically we know that it is an ortho para director. All right. So that's number 17. So now we want to go to the next page and look at number 22. All right, this one has a lot of steps to it. All right, so we want to draw all structures for the carbocation formation by ortho attack. So in this ortho position. And uh, we're just going to pick this as our ortho position for each of these. All right. And it's going to be the ortho attack of, of a nitro group, which means that we will have hydrogen and a nitro group. We're not doing the full mechanism. We're just drawing the resonant structures of the arenium ion. All right. So here is our original substituent. All right, those two pi bonds will stay intact. There's our tert butyl group. And then we'll have a positive charge here. We'll put hydrogen and NO2. All right, we can draw um, three additional resonance structures on this one. So we'll, we can move that lone pair of electrons over. Put our positive charge there. All right, we have an additional resonant structure where we can move this pair of electrons to there. That'll put a positive charge here. Positive charge there, hydrogen, and nitro. 
And then, uh, and that's it as far as our resonance structures for the uranium ion. Label any resonance structures that are especially stable or unstable. Well, this, because it has an alkyl group uh, uh, next to that positive charge, that's tri-substituted instead of di-substituted, uh, uh, so a tertiary carbocation, that means this one is especially stabilized. Now, on this one, we're going to end up having four resonance structures, so I'm warning you ahead of time uh, when you're doing this, make sure that you leave enough space here to do your four resonance structures. So I'm going to try to squeeze these in a little better. And we will have a positive charge there, hydrogen, nitro, and then OH. All right, those lone pairs are going to come into play here in just a moment. So we'll take this pair of electrons and move it over. Take this pair of electrons and move it over there. All right. And on this one, because we have a positive charge on this carbocation directly adjacent to a lone pair of electrons, we can do one additional resonance structure where we kick in that pair of electrons. You can see what I mean. This one's kind of crowded here. All right, and so there we have delocalized that positive charge because this one has uh, because this one has a everything has a full octet. This one is a especially stabilized. All right, now we're going to look at part C. We're going to do the same thing. going to do the same thing and so we have that aldehyde uh, here we're going to put a positive charge there hydrogen and nitro We'll do the same thing we've done on these, which is to kick those lone pairs, or the, kick those uh, um, pairs around. Positive charge there. We'll Delocalize that positive charge to this other atom. positive charge there all right and this is where this is where the issue I'm going to put this other one down here so that I can draw it with plenty of room so uh, I'll do resonance structure here we're going to take this pair of electrons uh, because for all of these you can draw this other resonance structure where you kick that pair the the pi bond out to the oxygen
positive charge there, negative charge on this oxygen. All right, and this is an especially unstable resonance structure because we put those two positive charges together. So we'll refer to this one as especially unstable. All right, well, we're going to call that the end of this video. Uh, and then we're going to look at, uh, we're going to start with limitations of electrophilic aromatic substitutions, uh, section 10 in the next video.